So Justin, hi. hi everybody, say hi. Hi everybody. We met when, after I was doing Dogs in the City. Right. But I was excited to get an email from you or a call from you from oh, someone, right, about one a of show. my reps or something. Yeah. So that's how we met through that show that we're still working on. That we still someday. are always toying with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But wait a second. So you have been, you worked as like a sort of a dog whisperer trainer yeah. person. But you're also a comedian and you also are an actor. Yes. So you do a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's interesting how those things intersect. I was, when I started doing stand up comedy, which is like, I think 14 years ago at this point. Uh, you know, when you're just starting out, you're trying to get people into the room so that you can have stage time. And right, right at that time, I was always I was also getting very much into animal rescue. So I thought a fun thing to do on a Wednesday night would be to throw a benefit where to raise money for the shelter that I rescued my dogs from. We called it Funny for Fido. Right. And I did this little benefit that raised yeah. maybe a thousand bucks. And then we did it again the next year and it raised like five thousand dollars. And then we've been doing it for like now 14 years and I was wow. just telling you we did it a month ago when Jerry Seinfeld performed wow. at it and Jim Gaffigan performed wow. at it and Jessica Kirsten so in a way my world in entertainment and my world with animals is always intersected. So tell me about your dog because you have a rescue dog right? Yeah I had two and then one passed away right. um, but I still have Chiquita who's my pit bull border collie who I always say was the one who really taught me everything I know about dogs. Mm -hmm. So Chiquita is a border and a pit bull. Pit bull. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, she's like a CEO. She's like a she's like a she's a real power woman. Where'd you get Chiquita from? Where'd she come from? I went to this. I saw her on Petfinder. Yeah, Petfinder is a great site. And I went to this place called Paws All Around, right, which was a house in the Bronx that was kind of in shambles because the, literally the dogs had taken over this house. I walked over to this house, it was in the projects. There were dogs on the roof. There were dogs all over the yard. There was barking everywhere. And I walked in and this lovely woman, Robin, was chain smoking Newports. And she was like, you're here for Princess? And I was like, yeah, that was the name, Chiquita's Princess name there. Name. And she was like, here she is. And this spunky little pit bull border collie was running around the house kind of nervous. And she said, watch this. And she clapped twice. And the dog like jumped onto her lap like she owned the place. Wow. And I was like, this dog's personality is awesome. And I took her home with me. Like, Could I tell you something? Yes, now? of course. Here's the crazy thing about Kitty. Yeah. Who's from Puerto Rico, right, where it's not so cool for dogs. Was she one of those rescue, yes. like those... Uh, Salto dogs. Salto though. Yeah. yeah, I just, I just trained dog. a bunch of those. Right, well, she is still a little skittish. You'll see when she comes, she's still a little bit, like, nervous around people. Uh -huh. Although, when she's on the leash, she's really kind of, she comes alive. But, you know, now when we're in Bridgehampton, she literally kills birds and kills mice and eats them. Yeah. Okay, just so you understand. Like, I did not understand that, like, dogs were feral that way and could actually kill and feed themselves. But I guess if you're in Puerto Rico and you need to eat, you what will was kill she doing? a cat yeah, or a yeah, bird. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> well, a bunny, she actually killed a bunny. Did it bum you out? She, it, I mean, of course, it's like you had this mad, you know, multi-level response to it. It's like... Good girl, I guess. No, don't ever do that again. You know, it was like a yeah, crazy yeah. thing. Right? She's got these like life skills. It's crazy. She's got these survival yeah, she skills. Does. That's cool. She does. It's cool. So it's like in a way she killed the bird, but in a way it's also right. like, hmm, this is gonna, she's know. a badass. <laughs> right? She's a total badass. Yeah. And now, like when she's skittish and, and, and scared, it's almost like she's play acting. You know, like she's not really that scared. She's just like, oh, don't come near me. You know, a she's little dramatic. Bit. Yeah, exactly. She chewed the edges. When, she, when we first got her, she was nervous. You know, from Puerto Rico, she did this. Look, see? She chewed, yeah. She chewed this, which is hilarious. You know, you, there's ways around That's that. That's funny. That she chewed the edge of that pillow there. There's ways around that. Well, of course, around. though, she doesn't do it anymore. She just yeah. did it for the first few months. You know, she was out of a crate off a plane from Puerto Rico. The other day, she's, she's a little bit anxious. She gets a little anxious. She just wouldn't I have to give you some down. CBD for her. Or, so yeah, give me the CBD. Yeah. All right. I, I, Where are you from originally? Here. You're from here. I'm a dyed-in-the-wool New Yorker. Me too. And how did you get interested in the whole idea of dogs? And where did, did you train somewhere? Did you read a lot of books? No, did you... everything was, I've always been really, I've always been like a kindred spirit for animals and cared about them a lot and had like, you know, when I would, It's this is interesting, when I was a kid and we'd walk past homeless people, I'd start hysterical crying and I'd make my mom give them money. And really? then, for, yeah, and then I've just always been sensitive. And then for some reason, that 
moved over to animals as you get older and you realize like, oh, people can make their own decisions and, you know, <laughs> they're jerk offs. So, right. I, so I rescued, I rescued Chiquita. I rescued this pit bull border collie. Right. Who was a handful. As a result of getting her comfortable and working her th- out of her insecurities and building her up and Chiquita. teaching her Chiquita and teaching her how to have a sense of self-esteem and realizing that there's this sort of work reward relationship as we were just discussing with human beings and dogs I sort of figured her out and I realized like you know what like this is something I'm kind of good at and I loved walking around my dogs all day and I said you know what instead of doing personal training I can make the same amount of money if I started like a dog walking route I know everybody right. in this neighborhood and next thing you know I had this dog walking route and just like a kindergarten teacher is going to be really good with kids a dog walker walking 15 dogs a day is you get really good with dogs because they were behaving so well with me I would notice little things about their personalities that you know this one's not getting like the owners the would tell dogs personalities or the owners dog, personalities? well both let me see okay. first the dogs personalities I would have owners say well I don't want my dog walked with other dogs because he tends to get a little nippy or she gets a little bit separation anxiety so well let me just see if I could figure it out and as a result I did whatever I was doing with them um, naturally just by trying to get them to have a good hour with me was solving a lot of their problems people started asking me for training advice and then I was still rescuing dogs so I got known in my neighborhood as that guy who could just fix people's dogs up when you're training people and their dogs is you know we work together a little bit with this yeah. it's like you're, it's figuring out the dogs is easy it's communicating that and course, instructing people, people how to do yeah. that so. what's the most common mistake that people make with their pets with their dogs people make the mistake of telling their dogs what they don't want them to do instead of telling them what they do want them to do. That's all the time. So because dogs think so immediately, let's say the doorbell rings, right? Yeah. The dog starts barking because they hear the doorbell. So the dogs are saying like, hey, someone's here, someone's here. So people go, stop barking, stop barking, stop barking. So now they're communicating that when the doorbell rings, now you're barking. So now the doorbell oh, rings, God. the dog starts barking, and you start barking. So what they <laughs> hear is, uh-huh. someone. they're going, someone's here, someone's here. And you're going, stop it, blah, blah, blah. And they're going, yes. yeah, I know, someone's here. As opposed to being like, the doorbell rings, here's what we do. And then you direct them to what I do with my dogs. I teach them, go to your spot, sit, stay, wait for the person to come in the door. So in so many situations, the dog is reacting to something. And then the person starts reacting to the dog reacting, as opposed to being like, let me set them up for success, which is a cliche dog term, but I'm going to yeah. use it in this instance, by demonstrating and walking through the steps of what I want them to do. But I could never get that to work. I tried it a thousand times, and I couldn't. And the problem is that, like, if you speak at all, it's not going to work. So you have to, like, do it. You have to do something. Yeah. But in order, in order for that to work... You have to figure. You have to know when the person is coming to the door, and then the doorman, and you have to have no. the treat ready. No, I'm telling you. And then they know if you're texting. I mean, they know that someone's coming. Yes. If you, I'm serious. They just know. Sure, stuff. they do. I answer a thousand phone calls a day. Whenever my ex would this is call, interesting. Whenever yeah. my ex would call, Chiquita would run to the door. Who else do I speak to in that tone? There's a consistency that she's right. picking up on. Like a dog, it, imagine like Charlie Brown, like how you hear wah, 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 wah. Mm-hmm. Every now and then they hear a keyword. So who's the other person that go, okay, you hear yet? Yeah. I would always say it the same way. So she identifies like when that activity happens, this yeah. is what he says right. first. Well, which is, which, and which, yes, and usually Dean understands that if I like hang up the phone and 20 minutes later the doorbell rings, that means food is on the way. Correct. Out. I swear to you, Justin, like... I order food online now. I finally figured out how to do you that because I'm really impossible with things online. But I finally figured from one place. It's only one place I'm able to order online from. And when I order the food online and the phone rings, he knows that it's food. It's it, usually it's dinner time. So yes, this is one reason. Yeah, they're 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 deducing, and yeah. for them they're painting. It's the bigger brushstrokes. Yeah, something about dogs, just right, like cats, of course. And yeah. horses, absolutely. But something about dogs, I mean, is it because they're so smart? Is it because they're not smart enough? Is it because they're so... I think it's because it? there's no us without them and vice versa. Dogs are created from wolves. Right. Right, if you go back how many, how many years here, by the time mm-hmm. we're walking around with a spear and like a, you know, an animal cloth for, yeah. you know, that you mm-hmm. would design beautifully now. That you would probably right? wear with a plomb. Right, America's Next Top with Model, few, they were walking around, a guy was With like, a few tattoos, fig- right. you would probably would f- figure it out sure. how to do tattoos. You look yeah. like one of the, the, the people from Game of Thrones. Um, but if you think about it, the wolves that didn't have what they call flight response, the ones that would 
feel more comfortable around people. Humans. Humans would stay closer to the campfires and then bark and alert when a bear was coming and then right. they'd get thrown a bone. So that basically is how the domestication of dogs started. You think about how necessary dogs were to human hunting and as our alarm systems and you know so together the the, the, the confluence mm -hmm. of the human and dog relationship is the thing that allows us to both exist so we were meant to be together mm -hmm. no but let me ask you this because the thing the thing is um, about dogs right you say you learn all these like wonderful lessons from yeah. them which is so true you do you learn these crazy wonderful things about life and about patience and about you know what's really important, etc. Yeah. Like you're talking about bringing in for a landing, but there is a lesson that you get from a dog that you can't put into words because it's just, it's about the absurd. It's about the absurd, and it's about the kind of the meaning of things that you can never put into words. I want to write this book called Everything I've Ever Needed to Know I Learned from Dogs. Yeah, because there's yeah. so many weird life lessons when dogs have certain anxieties. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people they tiptoe around these dogs' issues, and I was like, you know, if you just stay calm and keep the intention in your mind about what you want to do. Let's say a dog gets anxious of buses or cars or other dogs. If you just stay calm and you stay confident, and without forcing yourself through whatever activity it is, you just so you just monitor yourself and try to glide through, you'll watch the dog just sort of calm down. I'm like, well, why can't I just apply that to myself? What is the best way to go about adopting a dog? Like, what do you do? What do you, how, where do you look? How do you, what's the best advice you can give someone about, well, I'm not even gonna say getting a dog because I'm gonna take the whole breeder thing out of the equation yes. for the moment and just say, what's the best way to go about adopting a dog? Because I don't even know that anymore. Gotcha. There yeah. is a dog for everybody's lifestyle. So the most important thing is to take an accurate appraisal of who you are. As a rescue advocate, I think adopting a dog is a great thing because you, first of all, have the opportunity to try them out. Yeah. You could always foster oh, first. Right. The best thing to do is Think about your lifestyle. If you're a person who's like, all right, well, I work nine to five and I don't have a lot of cash in the bank, it's like, well, you're gonna need to have a dog walker. You're gonna need to be able to provide for this animal. So you're probably not a cat. You may be a cat person. Yes. Other dogs are older. Right. They're a little bit of couch potatoes. Maybe some have three legs. Maybe mm -hmm. some have one eye. They have disabilities. Well, there's people who are older Yes. Whose spouse has passed away, and they're like, well, I need someone to fit my lifestyle. Once you commit to the idea of adopting a dog, take your time. Right? Take your time. Yeah, your what's time. the rush? I don't know. Arnold, my husband, uh -huh. right? He got Dean before we were like living together, before we were married. Yeah, and I remember he, and, this. And you know, they make it really, really, really hard now for people to adopt dogs. Well, they don't want to bring them back. They don't want them to come back. Which I like because they don't want them to come back and because you got to vet people, people before you give them the dog, right? Of course. It's very important, but I think he was supposed to have this little dog called Lupita, who he was mad for. This dog called Lupita. I never saw Lupita, but he made it a date with the person to meet at his apartment, which was all the way, all the way downtown in the financial center. And he was a little early and he got there and he saw the van and they were leaving. And he was like, well, no, no, no. I, and they were like, no, no, you're an hour late. We made the appointment for two. And he was like, no, no, the appointment is for three. And they were like, no, the appointment was for two. So sorry, you lost Lupita. That's and he nice. watched the van pull away screaming like, Lupita! You know, he like freaked out. He still thinks about Lupita like when he kind of jokes around about like, you know, yeah. wanting to get rid of Dean as a joke. He'll say like, Lupita. You know, right. like you should have been Lupita, <laughs> right? But anyway, somehow there was a rescue center in JFK. I kid you not. Really? Yes. There was a shelter at the airport. I That's promise. weirder than a luggage store at the airport. You're like, wait a second, you don't have this item? I know. Yeah. At that point in history, a lot of animals got abandoned at the airport. I'm oh, not exactly sure how that yeah, happens, yeah, yeah. If people, yeah. it's crazy. No, like, it's you, crazy. It's crazy to I think. guess if dogs are flying under the plane or something? I don't know what it is, but there was a bunch of dogs, and he went, and, and he just came home with this dog. And Dean is the cutest dog ever to live. Yeah, adorable. He is a little lumpy now. He got a lot of lumps, you'll see yeah, when he comes they turn, in. Yeah, they turn into like uh, and he's down also, pillows. Exactly, he's over. also like, a, well, it's not down, it's like a rock pillow because he has those fatty cysts, which yeah. you can't really do anything about. But anyway, and his face is all sort of white now, but he was maybe the cutest dog you have ever seen in your life. He kind of owns me, Dean, yeah. and I love him, but he's a monster, you'll see. The minute he walks in here, the, 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 uh, the quality of the room will decline. 
a lot. Just the room will go, it'll go down hard. <laughs> You'll see. It just declines. Sometimes he's very disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and he like chews up bedding. And he's, he's a monster. Yeah. And of course I don't. I, I mean, mean, he I sounds great. I can't bed, wait to is, meet him. <laughs> <laughs> and he smells like, he smells like, 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 like sewage butt, like butt sewage. Do you like him? Sometimes. I love him. I love <laughs> Dean. I love him. He's just disgusting. 